Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS all in one. This is part two of how to build a concrete block basement for beginners. In this video, I'll be covering how to install electrical outlets inside a concrete block wall. In my previous video, part one, I covered a lot of the basics for building a concrete block basement for block courses one and two. And now I'm on the third block course, which contains the electrical. There's many methods out there to get electrical inside block walls, but I found this method to be the most efficient for me. So I found using bond beam blocks works really well for whatever course you decide to run your wiring for electrical outlets. These blocks are already partially hollow, which saved me a lot of time. Here's a look at a bond beam block with an outlet box already installed. This PVC outlet box is made by Carlin and has two three quarter inch inlets for three quarter inch schedule 40 conduit. So I've cut this block to fit an outlet box so my electrical can run inside my block wall. This method does require running your outlet sideways. So if that's not acceptable, this method may not work for you. So let's get started here with modifying a bond beam block. And what I'm doing here is centering this outlet box on the left cell of the block and marking right where the outside edges of it would be. And you can mount the box on the left or right side of the block. But for my demonstration, I will be on the left side of the block. Now I'm gonna move the outlet box to the outside face of the block and line it up with the marks that I just made and trace the outside edges of the box like this. So this area right here that I'm gonna mark with the X needs to be cut out so the box can fit inside this block. To cut it, I'm using a four inch angle grinder with a concrete diamond blade on it. And this works really well for this job. Make sure you're wearing some safety goggles before you start your cuts. So I'll cut one side at a time here. And I will have to cut from multiple different angles because this blade's not all that big, but it will get the job done. I'll cut down on this side, then cut from the front side here on both sides, then the middle. And you wanna to try to stain those lines as good as you can. And now I'm gonna knock out what I just cut with a hammer. And it should be a pretty clean break. And here's a closer look at the piece I just cut out. And the hole still needs a little bit more work, so I need to go ahead and hold my grinder sideways and go inside the hole here and kind of clean it up so I have a nice square opening. And I just about got it here. Now I need to grab a box and do a test fit. And it looks like it fits pretty good. Now I'm gonna show you how to secure the box to the block. And before you do that, you wanna make sure you go ahead and sweep off all the edges and make sure that block's clean first before doing this. So right here, what I'm using is Loctite Power Grab Heavy Duty Adhesive with zero second grab. And I'm gonna apply a bead of this adhesive to the inside edges of the opening I just cut. Then slide my outlet box in the opening. Then remove any excess adhesive. And I also apply a small amount of adhesive to the back side of the box as well. And something that is important that I would like to mention is I usually wait to secure these outlet boxes to the blocks. And I'll explain why here in a few. But for now, I'm just showing you how to secure these for demonstration purposes. Here's a closer look at the outlet box after being secured. And I have just enough room to run some 3 quarter inch conduit on the inside of the block where this box is mounted. Here's an example using two 90 degree PVC elbows. And this kind of gives you a visual of how the conduit can run inside the block. If I needed to, I could have my conduit raised from this block, or I could have it lower from this block as well. But for most of this job, I'll have the conduit running straight across from one outlet to the next outlet. To run the conduit around the corners of the block wall, I have to use a corner block and cut it in multiple different areas. So what I'm gonna do with this block is make a pathway so conduit can run inside this and around the corner. So I'm starting off here with cutting a rectangular hole on the inside face of the block. And this is about two inches deep and four inches wide. And this does need to be wide enough to fit conduit through it plus one piece of rebar. And I'll explain the rebar here in a few. Next, I'll cut another rectangular hole on the side of the block right here that's about the same size. So I'll knock that out then clean it up. And now I'm gonna cut the center and that's gonna be about the same size as well. And clean that up as well. So this block is just about ready. Now we'll go ahead and pick this up and put it in position to kind of give you a visual of how this will work. 
So I'll grab a piece of conduit so we can see it going around the corner here. So here's a 90 degree bend. So that gives you a real good visual of how the conduit will go inside this block and go around the corner. And here's what it looks like after getting a couple blocks in place. So there's my corner block there. I got a route for the conduit to go through. And here's one bombing block that already has an outlet box secured inside of it. And I put my outlets about every six foot. And there's a look at some more bombing blocks that have already been cut for outlet boxes. So as I mentioned earlier, you wanna to wait to secure the outlet boxes to the blocks, at least some of them. What I like to do is secure half of the amount of outlet boxes to the blocks beforehand, then stage the blocks to where every other outlet box is secured along the block wall. By doing it this way, it allows room to make connections with the conduit between the outlet boxes. Okay, I now have the majority of my blocks set, and it's time for me to start installing the conduit between the outlet boxes. So to start with here, I'm gonna go ahead and measure off where I wanna cut this. And this will actually be the starting point for my electrical feed. This PVC conduit cuts really easy. Right here, I'm just using a circular saw, and it cuts no problem. Now I'm gonna do a test fit with this piece to make sure it lines up correctly. Right here where the 90 degree bend is, is where the conduit will run vertically up the block wall. So I have to make sure it lines up with the openings in the block cells, so it has a pathway to make it to the top of this wall. After confirming the proper placement, I can glue this piece of conduit to this outlet box right here. Now it's time to move on to the next piece of conduit, and I've waited to secure this outlet box to the block, and I'll show why here in just a second. So right here's where the next outlet box will be going. Now I'm gonna grab another outlet box, and this is the same as the first one and I'll go ahead and place it in the block opening where I already have it cut for the outlet boxes. Then measure the distance between the two outlet boxes. And I'm gonna cheat a little. I'm gonna grab a piece of conduit and go ahead and place it inside the first outlet box and then mark where it needs to be cut on the second outlet box. Then make my cut. Then glue one end into the first outlet box. So I've primered both the conduit and the outlet box. Now I'm gonna apply glue and place it into the first outlet box. Now it's time to do the same thing for the second outlet box. So I'll apply primer to the inside of the outlet box right here, then primer to the pipe, and then glue them together. And I will go ahead and wait to glue this outlet box to the block and the remaining that are unsecured until I get all the conduit assembled on this block course. Now it's time to do the next piece of conduit. And this one is going around the corner, so I do have my 90 degree bend on it and I've already measured this one and cut it as well. So this one is ready to glue in place. So I'll go ahead and apply my glue, then place it in my second outlet box right here. Now let's take a look at what I've done so far. There's where the electrical feed will start. Then it goes to the first outlet box. Then here is the second outlet box. And here is the corner. And before I go any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and run some wire through the conduit first. It's not necessary to run the wiring right now, but for me, it did make things easier trying to get around the corner right here. So right here, I have a roll of standard 12-2 wire that I'm pushing through the second outlet box around the corner. I've just about got it here. After the wire pops through on the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the wire and continue pulling it and pull enough slack to where it can make it to the next outlet box. After pulling the wire through, I measured for another piece of conduit, then glued it to the next outlet box, then pushed the wire through the piece of conduit to the next outlet box. So the wire just made it to the next outlet box. So I'm gonna go grab the end of it and help pull it through here. And you wanna make sure you have at least a foot of wire pulled through your outlet box. After pulling the wire through the outlet box, I can then glue my two pieces of conduit together. So I do have a coupling here that's been primered so I can glue these together. So let's take another look at what I've done so far. I got one end of the wire right here that runs around the corner here to this outlet box right here. So for my electrical and my block wall, I kept it pretty simple by placing just the outlets in the block wall. And my light switches are located on the interior standard frame walls. But if you do need to install light switches inside your block wall, there is various T's and three-way outlet boxes that can be used to head vertically up the block wall through the cells. Then you can just custom cut the block that's located where you want the light switch to be installed. Okay, now let's get back to some more wiring. 
when pushing the wires from one outlet box to another without the corners being involved. It's much easier as demonstrated right here. So right here, I pushed the wire from the previous outlet box to this one, then I pulled it through. So I now have most of the conduit already ran with a lot of the wiring going in between the outlets as well. So let's take a closer look at what I've done. This would be the starting point for the electrical feed. Here's the first outlet box. Here's the second outlet box. And I do have the wires already ran between these boxes. Here's the first corner. The next outlet box with the wires already ran. And here's a look at the rest of the outlet boxes on this block course. And I have most of these spaced at a minimum of six feet, but I do have a couple of these that are a little bit closer together. Let's take a closer look at this outlet box here. This one will actually be the end of the electrical circuit for my block basement. So with this outlet box, I'll just end up putting a plug on this side because there'll be no wiring exiting the box on this side. Now let's head back over to my starting point for the electrical feed. So this section of vertical conduit will continue to head to the top of the block wall by routing it through the cells of the blocks. And I will wait to run the wire through this section until the block wall is complete. Then I'll feed the wire through the top to the first outlet box. Now that I have all my conduit and outlet boxes in position, it's time to go ahead and glue the remaining unsecured outlet boxes to the blocks. And there is plenty of give in the conduit between the outlet boxes that will allow me to lift the outlet box up slightly so I can apply adhesive to the blocks. After securing all my outlet boxes, it's time to add some half inch rebar to this course of bond beam blocks. Now the rebar may not be necessary since this is only the third course, but I figured I might as well since there's plenty of room inside the blocks and this will only make the wall stronger. And here's a final look at the third block course with the electrical inside of it before filling the cells with grout. Now for my block wall, I will be filling every block cell with grout to make this a solid wall. But if you don't wanna fill every block cell, I would still recommend filling every cell with vertical rebar and all block cells surrounding the outlet boxes, which will add extra support for the outlet boxes to keep them from ever moving. And to fill these cells with grout, I just used a five gallon bucket. Then used various trowels to finish the grout and make it flush with the top of the concrete blocks like this. Now let's take another look at this third block course now that it's finished with the grout inside the cells. And as you can see here, I have the grout flush with the top of the third course blocks. Now let's take a closer look at the outlet boxes. And as you can see here, these outlet boxes are secured and they're not going anywhere. Now that I have the third block course done with the electrical inside of it, I can continue on to the next course. So from this point on, I can just lay my blocks like normal. And for any of the conduit that runs vertically up the wall, I can just make extensions as I build the block wall higher. Okay, let's go ahead and fast forward here a little bit. And I wanna show you what the electrical looks like from the inside after finishing the block wall. So right here would be the starting point for the electrical feed. So right here, that's gonna be the same location, but on the inside. So right here, I fed the wire down the conduit. Then there's a 90 degree bend, and that goes to this outlet right here. And I was able to feed this wire through the conduit without any issues. There's a look at some of my other outlets. And I do have some interior walls that have been framed with some electricity inside those as well. So I got a couple outlets there. And I did go ahead and put all my light switches on these interior frame walls. So as you can see here, I got wiring all over the place. Here's a look at one of the outlet boxes before hooking up an outlet. And here it is after. And I'll go ahead and show you a couple more pictures. Here's a picture after the basement being finished. I have a light switch on the wall and an outlet on the block wall. And there's another picture. There's an outlet on the block wall and light switches on the interior walls. Okay, that's it for part two. Hopefully this video helped you out and gave you some ideas and tips on how to install electrical inside your block wall. For the next video, part three, I'll be covering how to do bond beams for the middle and top courses on a concrete block wall. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, if you could hit that like button and have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time.